coming up on How Do They Do It? How do they make a man fly with the coolest thing in the sky? How do they ferment fish for one of the smelliest foods on earth? And how do they harvest hemp to build a store for one of the most important halls in history? We take you around the world to show you how on How Do They Do It? Imagine a bungee jump with no bungee cord. These guys don't need to. Leaping from 1500 meter mountains with nothing to stop their fall except cloth wings stitched between their limbs. If the stitching fails, their parachutes won't save them. So, how do they do it? People have experimented with wingsuits for over a hundred years. Almost always ending in death. Only in the 1990s did Frenchman Patrick de Guéron develop today's modern, safer wingsuit. Since then, the sport has taken off. In 2012, a new world record was set with an eight minute long jump covering over 26 kilometers. But the dream of flying like Superman starts on the ground. The Tony Suit Factory next to Skydive City, Florida. Wingsuits made here make men fly. And nothing less than the best will do for daredevil Rob Harris. I'm here today to get measured for the latest and greatest wingsuit. It's called an Apache. The expert level Apache is their highest performance suit and was designed by wingsuit pioneer Tony Urigallo. He's skydived over 10,000 times and won numerous competitions wearing his own wingsuits. These daredevil outfits start life like any other well-cut suit, with some good old-fashioned tailoring, but with one small difference. If this suit doesn't fit, it won't fly properly, and that could be a big problem. Chest, 35.5 waist. The suit must fit Robert's body like a glove, so Tony takes 17 bespoke measurements. Shoulder tip to wrist, 22. Crush the floor, 32. That's it, you're done. Rob's body shape is fed into a computer, which plots each of the suit's pieces onto a sheet of material. And when you're flying through the air at speeds that can reach 360 kilometers an hour, any old fabric won't do. So the suits are made from waterproofed Parapack nylon. The pieces must be cut precisely. Any error due to creasing could have lethal consequences. A vacuum table sucks the fabric flat. And a computer-controlled blade cuts the suit's template to millimetre accuracy. Crucial to a suit's design are its wings. They're based on aircraft wings. The aerofoil shape causes air to travel over the top and bottom at differing speeds. This creates a difference in air pressure. Lower pressure above the wing and higher pressure beneath it lifts the wing and pushes down the air. Although it looks a little low tech next to a $100 million jet, these wings produce lift in just the same way. During free fall, air is rammed into tubular cells running the length of the suit, transforming it into one large aerodynamic wing. In manufacturing these high-tech wings, they only get one chance to get it right. So Phil Lieb cuts the pieces out by hand rather than rely on a machine. The cutter machine is like anything. It can make mistakes. Nothing is left to chance. Every suit is handmade by eight highly skilled seamstresses. Phil carefully marks white lines on the material, positioning the suit's internal cells. He then double checks the cut ribs for length. Lindsay Erickson and Tony Villa sew the ribs into position, making sure to stick to Phil's lines. It's extremely important that they're on the lines because 
when I sew all the ribs to the front, if they're not exactly on the line, then when I sew it to the back, it's gonna be off a little and it'll twist it. Plastic strips fix the air vents open, allowing air to flow through the cells, inflating them during free fall. I'm making three evenly spaced inlets, so that way the airflow goes through evenly throughout the whole suit. Two foam inserts shape the leading edge of the wings, guiding air over them and dramatically improving their performance. When complete, air will ram into Rob's wingsuit at up to 200 kilometers per hour, and that means any stitching will be put under phenomenal pressure. So they use a strong nylon thread called E69. Heather Pratt's job is to check the thread's tension. If the tension's bad, then the strings will just unravel. If you just have one little snag in them, it'll just pull the whole string out. Not what you want in midair. Well, I think it's very important. These people are flying proximity right along the sides of cliffs and stuff. To jump in a wingsuit, a flyer must have over 200 regular skydives under their belt. To even consider the expert level Apache suit requires another 200 wingsuit flights. The skill is in learning to control the suit with tiny movements of shoulders, hips, legs and feet. The wingsuit is so sensitive that a sudden large movement could send them into a dive or a fatal spin. But Rob hasn't ordered his new suit just for its manoeuvrability. He wants to fly long distances, and that means jumping from over 9,000 metres. Breathtaking, literally. Oxygen levels at those heights are a third of ground level. And with no breathing equipment, Rob would black out immediately. So an oxygen tank pocket is sewn into the suit so he can breathe as he leaps from the high altitude plane. We don't do many of these, not many people get oxygen. The oxygen canister will sit in here, and then the oxygen hose will come out to his mask. Life-saving cutaway handles are essential in a crisis. They'll allow Rob to jettison a tangled chute and quickly deploy his reserve. Stitch in a pair of durable studded rubber soles and some heavy-duty 10 millimeter zips, and the suit is nearly complete. It needs just one more thing before it's ready to fly. Skydivers like to look good as they plummet to the ground. And Rob Harris is no different. So this suit will have a sting in its tail. Tony, it's ready. All right, thank you, Christy. You're welcome. All right, looks good, huh? Beautiful. The cutting edge wingsuit fits Rob perfectly. Looks fast, doesn't it? And the bumblebee is cleared for takeoff. Time for Rob's maiden flight. Hold for the oxygen. And then we check the pins, check his bumblebee. The trick is uh, just keep everything symmetrical so you don't go into a spin. Time to try this bad boy out. Tony's design keeps the parachute inside the suit, leaving the outside as one uninterrupted streamlined surface. That reduces drag, making this suit lightning fast. But when needed, the parachute can still be deployed in a heartbeat. And armed with this brand new Apache suit and a supply of oxygen, for Rob, the sky's the limit. Still to come, how do the Swedes feed their appetites for one of the smelliest dishes on earth? And how do they build a store for priceless historical relics from a bumper crop of hemp? Join us after the break to find out how on How Do They Do It?